Success and failure are not opposites. They are life itself. Failure is feedback. Let's talk about that and talk about freedom today. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And today we're going to focus a little bit on freedom and the concept of freedom. And to my mind, most people in this country don't understand freedom. So let's talk about that and let's get it from my perspective. You know, when you're driving out in the country, you don't see a lot of stoplights. All right. Or the way you should be saying it, go lights. All right. Always be positive. You don't see a lot of stoplights out there. Why? because there's not a lot of people out there and it would inhibit your freedom if you had to stop every little bit if you're out in the country and there's you know very little traffic as opposed to when you're traveling in the city and there's a stoplight every block or every couple of blocks or every half a mile or whatever and you have to stop and you say and you say to yourself you know what I have to give up that freedom of continuing okay because this light is telling me to stop that's the law because if I give that up, then the society as a whole is going to be safer. You follow what I'm saying here? Okay, so, and, and let me give it to you a, in a little, a little different way. Let's, let's take one of my favorites, Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry, I think we can all say, is the best shooter that's ever played basketball. Okay, or if he's not, he's certainly in the team photo. Think about the things that Steph Curry does to put himself in the position that he's in. He shoots the ball from way downtown. All right, and so in order to do that, what does he have to do? Well, first of all, he has to practice, practice, practice. This man shoots a zillion shots all the time so that when he's in the game, he's already taken that shot and he takes him further out. He goes further out and further out and he's got some skills, make no mistake about that. But the point is, he practices and practices and practices the, those shots. It's not something that just happens to him. You don't become a great shooter like that without hours and hours and hours of practice. As a matter of fact, he gave up his personal freedom, his time to spend that time disciplined, practicing, taking his shots. And what is the end result of that? Well, he gave up some of his freedom, his time, in order to put himself in a position where he has even more freedom because he's shooting the ball from way outside. In some cases, it seems like he's shooting it from a completely different zip code. Now, Steph's coaches would not allow him to be taking those long shots if he wasn't making them, if he wasn't getting results. So the discipline of giving up his time, of giving up part of his freedom all right, to work on what he needs to work on gave him more freedom. Not only that, but it also gives the team more freedom. How is that? Well, when Steph has the ball and he's the shooter that he is, people want to make darn sure that he doesn't get a good look at the basket. And so they come out and they cover him, and when they cover him, that leaves somebody else open. He passes the ball. That gives them, his teammates, more freedom. You follow what I'm saying? So freedom is individual and freedom is a team thing. But mostly you have to understand you have to give up some freedom in many cases in order to achieve a better quality of freedom or more freedom than you originally had. Does that make sense? So sometimes you give up that freedom and you replace it with discipline to achieve either more freedom than you had to start with or a better quality of freedom than you had to start with. Capiche? Now, no different, it's no different than the success formula. In the success formula, you run into a roadblock, you find a new starting line. That's your mindset. We right now in this world, in this country, have the mindset of instant everything. You can binge watch, you can watch all the shows all at once, you can take a pill that's going to solve all your problems. But you know what people don't realize is that is not the true success formula. It's not you take 
one dose and boom, you're all healthy. That's what people want. Gee, if I go and I see the psychiatrist, my son's going to be, you know, completely normal. It doesn't work that way. You're not going to have it happen in one sitting. You're not going to meet somebody and then fall in love the first day, get married and live happily ever after. You have to go through the courting period. You can't skip the steps necessary to bring the, desi the final desired outcome and the, until you have bonded those steps together. You know, when I think of that, the first thing I think of is the Internet. Now, Eli, you know, you were here, uh, the, the Internet, well, you just press a button, you're on the Internet, boom, that's the way it is. Wasn't always that way. When you wanted to get on the Internet, first you had to sign up for the service, then you would have you dial it into your phone, you'd connect the, the wire into your phone, it would make these noises, and it would take a few minutes, and you'd get connected, and the time, it, do you follow what I'm saying? It was those little steps that enabled us to get to the point where now we just come in, press a button, boom, we're on the internet. So you get to that place where you have like the single action that gets you from point A to point B, but before you get there, you have to have done all sorts of little steps to get there. Now, as far as this pandemic is concerned, solving it, clearly we're not there yet. What is predictable and what should we do? Well, I don't pretend to be a Nobel Prize winning doctor or medical expert, but I was blessed with some common sense, which, by the way, I typically refer to as uncommon sense because so few people have it. You've got to look at this challenge, this pandemic challenge, this virus challenge, the way our founding fathers looked at the challenge of constructing the Constitution. What the heck is he talking about? Well, the biggest issue that the Founding Fathers had in constructing the Constitution was some people wanted to have a very strong central government and some people wanted to have a very weak central government and wanted the government to be local. So how do we solve that problem? The Founding Fathers said, how do we solve that problem? And they had people on both sides constructing, you know, composing the Constitution. What they did is they said there are certain things that are better left to a local government and there are certain things that are better left to the big government. Okay? For example, when, when we in the United States, when we go to war, that's not a local thing. That's not a city or a town thing. It's a county thing or a state thing. That's a United States thing. That's everybody all together, all of us as one. You follow what I'm saying? So some things require a larger jurisdiction and some things like, example, passing a bond for a school or putting lights in a particular area of town. We don't need to go to Washington for that. That's a local issue. All right. Now, as I predicted on this very channel before the Delta or the Omicron variants made their appearances, if we don't look to curtail this beast on a worldwide basis, that's the same thing as applying a Band-Aid to, to correct a laceration that needs 100 stitches. You're not going to get the job done. Fact, when you allow a virus to multiply, there are always going to be mutations slash variants. It's a game of numbers. The virus itself is powerful. Its variants, Omicron and Delta, are even more powerful still. When we, the U.S., go to war, it's not a community issue, it's a national issue. Boundary lines are erased. No counties, no states, no cities. We're all together, as we previously said. When you go to war against a virus, or you go to war against global warming, that's a global issue. It's time for the leaders of the world to recognize the necessity of global cooperation. It's time for the leaders of the world to define the proper jurisdiction because a virus does not know the political concept of freedom from the political concept of communism from the political concept of a dictatorship. Just as there are no politics for those that are starving, there's only food, there is no politics for the infected. There's only health. What we need for our leaders 
great and small, from industry, from academia, from churches, from mosques, and from temples, secular, non-secular alike, is to rise up and follow the mantra that my number one mentor, Bob Anderson, embedded upon me when he was teaching me what it takes to be a leader. He said, Eli's dad, here's the first rule of leadership. Leaders lead. We need leaders to lead. We are not one nation under God. We are one planet under God. In this time of year, when resolutions for the future are commonplace, and I'm sorry to say in most cases, meaningless rhetoric, let's lock arms together, all of us. Swallow our personal and patriotic pride and unite as a global unit to win this worldwide battle of survival for the greater good of the entire planet. We need to give up a little freedom for now, practice the proper discipline and work ethic to amass more freedom and a greater quality of freedom than we currently possess because we're inflicted with this virus. And as Steph Curry would say, that's what we need to shoot for. Amen. Until we meet again, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.